Ever since I posted the video documenting my first ever NAS build, uh, it was a, a true NAS server inside of a Fractal Design R5 with like 24 terabytes of raw storage. Uh, it was super cool to document like both the true NAS configuration and, and the PC build as a first time NAS builder. But I mean, ever since then, I've really wanted to go and build a, a super small, not necessarily portable, but like super small, could, could sit on your desk style NAS that you didn't have to put in a closet somewhere because it was too big or too loud because of all the fans. And that is exactly what I have right here. So this is my latest NAS build. It is powered off of the Zima board. Uh, it's got 16 terabytes of raw storage and it fits in the palm of your hand. It's got this single fan to keep this thing cool and temperatures are surprisingly fantastic with this little 3D printed case. But overall, I wanna walk you guys through the process of one, building this thing, designing it, uh, setting everything up, and the power that lies in your hands with a super tiny, small little NAS build that not only acts as a NAS, but also acts as a home server that you can run Home Assistant, Plex, whatever you wanna run on it, this thing is powerful enough to do it. So let's just jump into this video. Uh, I, I, we're starting off with the brains, the, the power behind this whole thing, which is the Zima board. And I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what this thing is, what it's capable of, all of the hardware and, and, and onboard processing power that it has in order to get this thing off the ground. So let's first just start off with the unboxing experience of our Zima board. So this particular model is the 832 version. It's the top end from Zima board. It could be had for right around $199, either from Amazon or from Zima board directly. And it's the top of the line due to one, the RAM configuration. So it's got the most amount of RAM out of any of the other Zima boards, as well as the processor on board. But inside the box, we get our 12 volt power adapter. It comes with all the different uh, adapters that you would need for any country where you're buying this thing. And here's the Zima board in the box, super cool little package uh, and, and design for this thing. Uh, but once we get it out of the box, you just get a real feel of how small this thing actually is. So, I mean, once it's in your hand, like, yeah, it's, it's super dense in, in terms of the package. Like you get uh, uh, this huge aluminum heatsink on top of the thing. And, and you just have like very little uh, motherboard and a lot of heatsink, like, yeah, I don't know, two thirds of this thing is heatsink. But what you can really uh, tell right off the bat is this thing is meant for somebody that wants to tinker. Uh, it's got two USBs, two ethernet ports, your power, a mini display port, two SATA connections on board with built-in power, so you don't need any external power supply for this thing, plus that uh, PCIe slot on the side, which really enables you to do kind of endless things with this by either adding you know extra memory, uh, extra uh, storage support or anything else. So here's the board itself. We got that Intel Celeron N3450, which is a four core CPU running at 1.1 to 2.2 gigahertz, eight gigs of memory, and then 32 gigs of flash storage on board. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall this thing is just super, super cool with the amount of power and processing capability in such a small package. Uh, and you can even, if you wanted to, solder on uh, some things on those empty pads if you wanted to maybe run uh, a fan uh, port off of this board versus, you know, running it off of something like USB. Uh, and overall, I mean, like, it's just super cool to see this design with the aluminum heatsink and how well it cools this thing. But the other piece of this build is, of course, our storage. And we're going with a dual 8 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drive. So we're getting 16 terabytes of raw storage inside of this server. Um, and it's going to be, of course, all powered by that Zima board. So the four cores of the Intel Celeron and the eight gigs of memory should be plenty to run this thing, if, uh, especially running uh, hard drive based storage at a gigabit per second, considering our port uh, or Ethernet port is only a gigabit per second on the Zima board. So I also had to pick up this dual SATA adapter. So it converts the individual SATA connectors on the Zima board plus the HDD power off of the Zima board into two separate connectors for both of our hard drives. We also, uh, the, the, it comes with its own single connector. So if you wanted to go from one SATA to a single hard drive, it comes with that in the box. But if you do want to adapt to two separate ones, you'll have to pick up this daisy chainable kind of uh, setup. Uh, it's like 12 bucks from Zima board or on Amazon. So it's a super cheap little accessory to get off the back. Um, and yeah, I mean, we got it all plugged in, powered on. And there we go. We got our two eight terabyte hard disks, 
both set up as well. Yeah, they're not formatted or anything, but I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. But first I wanna show you guys the design or the uh, design process of building our case for this thing. So overall, super simple. We built it in Fusion 360, pretty much just a rectangular box with a shelf for the Zima board, the bottom spot for the hard drives. Try to get some tabs in there to screw in the hard drive cage that we got from Fantex. Um, and then just a, a, a spot for us to install our fan, slotted out the sides and the top just to get some good airflow on this thing. But overall, this isn't a small print. It's like four and a half by four and a half by eight and a half inches long. So it's still extremely small, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna take a little while to print. So once I get it loaded into our slicer software, uh, which we're printing on a Creality Ender 3 Pro, um, yeah, it's gonna take about three days, two and a half days to get this thing printed out. A lot of support material needed. Maybe not the best design choices by me in terms of uh, some of these uh, angles that I decided to go with, but I think it looks really, really cool, especially now that it's off the printer. This thing's done after waiting for almost three days. It's It looks pretty good. Uh, this port material turned out well. Uh, overall, a very, very clean print. And first step, we took all the hard drives out of the cage. We got the cage installed into the 3D printed case. It's a bit of a snug fit. Uh, I need to go back and redesign some of the tolerancing on this thing just so that it, it's a little bit less snug in there. But the snugness is nice because the hard drives do stay pretty nice and secure even without screws. But we're definitely going to screw these things down once we get them in there. So we'll get our bottom one in, uh, our, our top 8 terabyte drive as well. Um, and overall, I mean, the process is super simple. It's a hard drive cage, two hard drives, the Zima board on top, plug those SATA connections in and you're pretty much done. And it's just plugging in Ethernet, power, mini display port, and you're off to the races, and your NAS is pretty much done. Uh, we then got uh, our, our fan, of course, and this thing's just running off of a USB to fan header adapter. So this is where I wish maybe I could open up one more USB port, not having to run the fan off the USB and run it off the board power itself. So that is definitely one change I will probably make to this thing down the line. But overall, once it's powered on, this thing looks awesome. I mean, the fan's spinning up at the front, uh, you can see everything on the inside with the drives at the bottom and the Zima board up top. And uh, yeah, overall, it's just super cool to see this thing on my desk. Almost the footprint, probably less of a footprint than a Mac Mini. So now it's time to actually get this thing set up. And what's really cool about the Zima board is it's running a version of Linux called Casa OS that allows you to kind of do everything from a web portal. So as soon as you get this thing hooked up to your network, it enables this view. So it's got its own built-in uh, uh, browser view that enables you to control the entire board from the internet. It's got built-in uh, uh, search functionality that either re redirects you to DuckDuckGo, to Google, whatever you want your search engine to be. It's got a built-in app store with everything from uh, Cinching to Jellyfin to Home Assistant, Nextcloud, Plex. All the things that you, or all the apps that you've probably heard of for a home server, they're on here, you can use them. This is one we're going to take a deeper dive in, which is Duplicati, in order to create backups of our storage on to our second drive. So we'll do a deeper dive into all that stuff. But first things first, just an overview of the interface. So over on the left, we have a couple of widgets. We can see CPU temperature, power uh, consumption. Again, this is only a 6-watt TDB chip, so you're not going to create uh, too much heat. Uh, our storage capacity, all that stuff you can see. Uh, so we can see we have our two eight terabyte drives, SDA, SDB, but they're not set up as storage. Um, so they're just empty drives at this point. So what I'm gonna do is set them both up as storage drives. So we're gonna set one up as Zima one, format and create, super quick, like 10 second process to format them. Uh, and then we'll do the same for our second drive. We'll go in there, create a second storage drive called Zima two, and we'll format and create that drive as well. So at the end of the day, now we're gonna have almost, yeah, right around 15 terabytes. So they're eight terabyte drives with around 7.2 terabytes of raw capacity. And there's a beta feature within Casa OS that allows you to actually merge these drives into a single virtual disk. Um, but what I'm gonna do is actually keep them separate so that I can, one, uh, kind of set up a, a, there's no RAID functionality within Casa OS like you might have with TrueNAS or Unraid or something like that. But what we're gonna do is, pretty much write everything to our one drive and then mirror all that onto our second drive, either using Duplicati for backup or just copying and pasting onto our second drive. So you can see our two storage devices, Zima 1 and Zima 2. And now we're kind of ready to get this thing set up for actual you know, NAS, sharing it uh, with a Windows PC or a Mac. Um, so first step is creating a folder. And I'm gonna call this Zima 1 Shared. 
And what we're going to do is then check the shared checkbox, uh, which allows us instantly to share this with any of the other devices on your network. So uh, yeah, very, very simple process to set this stuff up in Casa OS. Our second one is going to be Zima to backup. And this is just going to be a backup drive for us to move all of the storage that's set up on Zima 1 over to Zima 2. So we have kind of like a mirrored uh, backup so that each drive has the same content. If drive one ever goes bad, we still have all the data on drive two. And now what we're going to do is kind of showcase how you would actually connect to Zima One Share. So if you go to the shared uh, button on the bottom left of the window, you'll click on that. You can click on Zima One Share and that shows you the, the links needed to either connect via Windows or connect via a Mac. So we're going to go into our file explorer, click on this PC, right click on this PC, open up. Uh, map a network drive, type in that shared link that we get from Casa OS, connect to it with our username and password that you set up at the beginning. And after that, I mean, yeah, that's all you have to do. Now you're connected to it. You can access the Zima One shared uh, a drive over the network and pretty much have a NAS that easy, that simple. No real setup process needed with this. Super cool. Uh, so next step is make sure it actually works and at the intended speeds. So we're going to take a few video files from a previous video uh, and paste them on our Zebo one shared folder. And as you can see, we're getting that full one gigabit speed, 111, 112 megabytes per second, which is awesome. I mean, yeah, that's all the speed you really need, especially when you're copying, you know, a lot of folders. It's pretty much just as quick as if you were to plug in something directly to your PC. And when you click into the Casa OS web view, which anybody can now access with the shared folder, uh, I mean, everything looks really, really good. Playback is super smooth, just as you would expect on the PC or the, or, or the hard drive that is storing this directly. So the web portal is a super cool way to just view everything. You can download data directly from the web view. So if somebody's accessing this, uh, let's say you VPN into your home uh, network, you then access the, the Zima board portal or the Casa OS portal. Uh, downloading files off of there is super, super quick. I mean, it's like almost 15, 20 megabit per second or megabytes per second download speed uh, for these files, which is super quick, especially over the network. Um, but next step is what does it actually look like to copy these files over to our backup drive? So one way to do this is, of course, just copy and paste within uh, uh, Casa OS. So you could do this by setting up both of them as kind of shared folders. And maybe when you're going and, and copying and pasting, you can copy and paste the both drives at the same time. This is going to limit uh, your network speeds. So you can only really do that 55 megabytes per second to both drives if you're going to copy and paste the both drives at the same time. But on Casa OS, because it's writing directly from one drive to the other, uh, it's a lot quicker. It's going at closer to like 200 megabytes per second if you do it within Casa OS, within the web view, copying and pasting between Zima 1 and Zima 2. But let's say you don't want to go through the process of manually copying and pasting between your Zima 1 uh, drive and your second drive. Uh, one way you can avoid this is by installing this particular app, which is called Duplicati, which allows you to create uh, a restoration point or, or multiple restore points, which are just backups going between one storage device and another. Or you could even go from the storage device on board of Casa OS to, let's say, a cloud service like Google or, or OneDrive or OneBox or Dropbox, whatever it is. You can go uh, both between local and cloud storage or from one local drive to another local drive. Really, really cool uh, piece of software. Um, but it's not actually copying and pasting the files directly. So when you open up a, a file copied by Duplicati, you're actually opening up more of a encrypted zip folder of the data that it then unencrypts when you want to restore data. First step for setting up Duplicati is giving it access within settings to the, the, the drives uh, that you want it to have access to on the local drive. Um, and also setting the environmental variables uh, for PUID uh, and, and password to be the root for your um, your Casa OS instance. So rather than signing in as you know uh, PUID 1000, which is kind of just like a random uh, variable, we're going to give it zero and zero to set it to the root uh, the root user, so that it has full access to be able to access our local drives. 
Um, and then we're also going to set our time zone to America, New York, just so that when we do set up the restoration timing, so let's say we run on it every Monday night at 1 a.m., uh, we can set that up following our time zone so that it runs at the correct time. It's running in the middle of the night when not a lot of other uh, software might be running, let's say. So once we have all of our settings configured, we can then click on the Duplicati app, and that's going to open up a separate window uh, for us to then create a backup for whatever we want to do. So we're going to go in and, uh, and click on add a backup, give it a name. So I'll just call it Zima backup. And you can choose if you do want encryption on what the backup is going to be created on. Next, we're going to pick a backup destination. So uh, we want that to be our backup drive. So not Zima one. I selected the wrong one here, uh, but I'm just going to test connection to both drives. So we'll test the connection to Zima one. I'm then going to go, yeah, I kind of screwed this up, but we'll go back, select our backup destination as backup, which is good. And now we're going to cl uh, click our source data, which is going to be in computer. And then we're going to click on Zima one. So it's going to copy everything from Zima one over to our backup drive. Then we're going to select a schedule. Uh, so we can automatically run backups or we can run them manually and we can select when we want them to run. So let's say we want them to run at 1 a.m. on Sundays and we're going to run it uh, not one day, but let's say it's every one week. So we're going to run it every week on Sunday at 1 a.m. Uh, and from there, that's pretty much it. We're also going to set up with this general option to create the remote volume size for 500 megabytes. So that means when it creates this subfolder of data, this zipped uh, folder of data, the maximum file size is going to be 500 megabytes. It's kind of a limit you want to consider. Uh, you don't really want to go over that or else it's going to create some other problems for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it. Now it's, you know, we run this restore point uh, manually just to double check that everything's working. The one thing is it does run a little bit slower. I mean, you're running it at one in the morning, so it doesn't really matter, uh, but it's running at closer to like 20, 25 megabytes per second versus 100 or 200 megab megabytes per second if you're to just copy and paste. But now you can see all these duplicati uh, uh, files. And yeah, you can't really access that data directly off of backup, but what you do do is you can create or, or restore from the duplicati instance. So if I go into our files uh, and let's say I delete everything off of Zima one share for whatever reason we had an issue, everything got deleted or let's say Zima one share just or the Zima one drive died and now we've replaced it with another drive. What I'm going to do is go into the Duplicati view. We're going to click on restore and we're going to Zima one backup or Zima backup and we're going to restore from Zima backup from Zima two or from the backup drive to Zima one. So now what we're going to do is select the files we actually want to transfer back over from the Zima 2 backup to Zima 1. We'll leave that temp folder out of there. It's going to write to the original location, overwrite if there's uh, duplicate files, and that's it. We're going to download all the files, and then it's going to download them to Zima 1, which we can just check really quick in Cas OS in files to see that it's actually downloading stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, once you click on it, stuff's starting to show up. Uh, and it's super, you know, a relatively quick process if you're doing a lot of data. Let's say we're trying to write all eight terabytes over from one drive to another. That's going to take a little while. Um, but with something like this, it's pretty quick. So if you're, you lose a, you know, a file or two, not too difficult to get those restored. Overall, like a really, really easy, simplistic setup with Casa OS. Definitely some limitations when it comes to RAID and things like that. But super cool, super sweet uh, way to get, you know, a lot of, cool server home server apps installed super quickly. So if you guys are looking to build a similar style server like this one, I'll have all the links down in the description below to get your hands on this hardware. Uh, if you have any like setup questions or anything like that, definitely leave those down in the comments below. I'll also make sure to leave the CAD or a link to the CAD files uh, in the description below. So you guys can of course 3D print this super cool case. Uh, but again, any questions, leave those down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the next video.